Good evening, and thank you for attending tonight's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. The agenda will be displayed on the screens in the front of the room. You may also follow along by connecting to the district's website, www.wcsoh.org. I mean, um, click on the district link, then select Board of Education, Board Docs Agenda, and then tonight's meeting. There will be two opportunities to address the board this evening, the first being agenda item 6.01, the first set of public comments is relative to agenda items 7.01 through 11.04. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. And then the second opportunity to speak is agenda item 12.01. There is a sign-up sheet located on the table in the back of the room if you would like to speak this evening. Each speaker will have five minutes to address the board. A timer will be shown on the screen. And with that, Ms. Hendricks, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bird. Dr. Nestor Baker. Here. Mr. Villardo. Here. Mrs. Davidson. Here. Ms. Cotter. Here. Would you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, the next item on our, on our agenda is 3.01, recognition of Heritage Middle School in the Middle School Track and Field Championships. Um, Mr. Villardo, are you going to do that for us? I am. Thank you very much, President Cotter. This is uh, one of those things that we just really enjoy doing, recognizing outstanding work, whether it's uh, academically, uh, athletically, artistically, uh, some combination, and we have some uh, outstanding young people here this evening. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the board and superintendent and treasurer to stand up front yes. here. I'm going to go to the podium and read a resolution, and then your coach will bring you all up one by one. So give us just a minute while we get situated. Our president was heard in her track and field this afternoon. <laughs> so, she, uh. <laughs> so we are really, and I just, uh, I just get to share with you. Uh, but I, this is from the board and the, uh, the the administration. We're just really excited to have you all here, so that we can recognize your outstanding work. Um, this is in recognition Heritage Middle School um, track and field championships. And uh, I'm going to read a resolution, then invite your coach up to uh, share just a few moments. Resolution of commendation for Heritage Middle School. Whereas a number of students from Heritage Middle School in Westerville qualified to compete in the second annual 7th and 8th grade OHSAA State Track and Field State Championship held on Saturday, May 12 at Lancaster High School. And whereas the contingency from Heritage pitted against 15 other top qualifiers in each event was led by coaches Patrick Acox and Molly Miller. And whereas each participant displayed and came away with valuable lessons in sportsmanship, respect, and camaraderie. And whereas Heritage's 4 by 200 meter relay team, James McCreary, Frederick Yeboa, Michael Doncor, uh, Caden Saunders finished in second place, and whereas uh, Caden Saunders won the state championship in the boys' 100-meter dash with a time of 10.99 seconds, and whereas Brooke Holloway took first in state in the girls' pole vault event with a winning vault of 10 feet, therefore be it resolved that the Westerville City Schools Board of Education and Superintendent commend Heritage Middle School for its stellar showing at the state track and field meet and thank them for bringing honor and distinction 
to our district and community. Congratulations to this team. At this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Coach Patrick Acox. We should applaud for you too. <laughs> applaud for the coach. Members of the board, Dr. Kellogg, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present you uh, the, our state champions and our second place team here on behalf of myself and Coach Molly Miller. Um, these athletes have continued to represent um, themselves and their family, um, their families, their school in a positive manner. Um, and to give you one example of this as a group, uh, this group had a 3.6 GPA for this last year. So they're getting it done on the, on the athletic fields as well as the classroom. So um, at this time, I'd like to introduce our, our members um, of the track team. Um, first, we have our 4 by 200 meter relay team. We have James McCreary. We have Frederick Yaboa. We have Michael Donker. And then our last member of the 4 by 2 and then the 100 meter dash winner, Caden Saunders. And then our girls pole vault champion, Brooke Holloway. I think it. I think it is very important what the coach brought out. Uh, a three-six is that what you said? Uh, uh, that really is commendable. The the work that you put in uh, out on the field, and the work that you have put in uh, to the classroom, you are carrying yourselves well, and we um, are excited to see what you're going to be doing uh, next year in high school. So one more time, congratulations to the team. Congratulate Drew, too. You get a resolution, too? I'm just picking up with mine. <laughs> oh, you get this resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, about a, how about a hand for the principal? <laughs> are there pictures out there, or we have everything? So you all can head on out uh, with parents, and unless you want to stay, but uh, go on out for some pictures. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Is that what I read? Yeah. Uh, I'll have to. I'll have to read. I'll have to read it. I. You know I. I mean, normally I. You're good at that. Well, normally I read it, but, but I, I, I could I could have. Let me see. Looks like your hands are screwed. That stuff's got to be really painful. It's okay. Here, give me the crutches when you sit down. I'll put them back there. Thank you so much. Okay, our next item on the agenda is 4.01, approving the minutes for a regular board meeting held on May 21st, 2018. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes? Okay, we don't um, vote to approve the minutes. Um, it's just a matter of course. So moving on to agenda item 5.01, uh, there's nothing on the agenda there. Um, agenda item 6.01, 
nobody signed up for public comments. So nothing there. Agenda item 7.01, no financial things tonight. It's moving right ahead. <laughs> um, agenda items 8.01 through 8.10. Um, Mr. Hershiser, are you covering that for us? I am. Thank you, Madam President. Members of the board, Dr. Kellogg. Ooh, I'm sorry. Let me give me one second. Can I have a motion and a second to discuss those agenda items, please? So moved. Seconded. Okay. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hershiser. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, on tonight's consent agenda, we have uh, four, for under resignations, we have four licensed teachers, we have four classified staff. We have four total leaves of absence, one licensed and three classified. Under contractual status change, we have four. Uh, change of assignment, including five clerical for summer employment, and we also have 13 bus drivers who have offered to help with subbing in our custodial department. We have 11 licensed one-time pays. Under our employment section, we have 10 licensed teachers. We have our extended time contracts um, that we do annually. We have licensed summer school intervention teachers due to an increase in our student enrollment with summer school. Uh, extended school year tutors, uh, two supplemental positions. I do anticipate several more at the next on the next agenda with uh, fall sports coming up in the very soon after that. And the final thing I have tonight is we have a new licensed principal for McVeigh, uh, who is here with us this evening, uh, Jim Swain. Are there any questions? No questions, just a welcome. Yes, welcome. Yep, welcome. Can you please call the roll? Our finance director. Yes. Yes. Mr. Burke. Yes. Ms. Davidson. Yes. Ms. Cotter. Yes. Okay, moving on to item 9.01. There is no old business. <clears throat> Next agenda items are 10.01 and 10.02, some new policy changes. Is there anyone going to discuss this? Okay. <laughs> I can talk about the conference. Okay, you're going to, is there anyone here for the other one or? Definitions? Let me check the definitions policy? Ms. Hershire, did we have anyone for the definitions policy? <clears throat> I don't think it's a difficult one, but. How many hats are you wearing this week? Don't figure that out. <laughs> uh, this one came about with uh, some changes to some other policies that we had in technology. Mm -hmm. um, some of the changes that we had in the technology uh, that Greg Lewis had presented, and I think uh, Dr. Nestor Baker and Mr. Bird had some questions, so we, we held that one as they continue to work through some of those things. Uh, this one uh, is being put before the board for the first reading. Uh, with some of the definition changes that are in that policy that will be coming back. Mm -hmm. So I do have a, a quick um, request for, I would say, research and possible um, edit. Um, in the definition that starts with apps and web services, um, and the technology team, and we can take this offline as well, um, we, we probably would serve ourselves if we referenced as well either and or cloud solutions. Um, apps and web services is, is a little antiquated um, mm -hmm. and may not encompass all of the different ways that um, those services can be delivered. So, okay. Thank you. Yes, that's, that's something we can make, uh, yeah. or an adjustment we can make before the next reading. Yep, we may, and, and we may want to differentiate as well, mobile applications, cloud-based solutions, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I can get with the team and we can discuss it. That'd be great. Thank you. 
Any other comments or questions? No? Okay, thank you, Mr. Hershiser. Next up, Ms. Baldwin. Good evening. I'm here to share with you some changes to the college credit plus policy as, as a result of new Ohio administrative code and concerns underperforming students in college credit plus. And if student falls below a 2.0 or withdraws from two or more classes and earns a W on their college transcript in the college credit plus program, they are now going to be placed on probation and receive a letter from the district the student will only be able to take one class the following semester, and at that time, if they don't raise their GPA, then they would be dismissed from the program. This is a change um, in the past. If a student did poorly, they could continue to sign up for classes against the advice of their school counselor or the college academic advisor. Um, this gives another opportunity for students to pause and reflect on what is maybe going well and what they need to do differently before they continue to enroll in college coursework and not only affect their high school transcript, but their college transcript as well. Any questions? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, moving on to agenda item 11.01, .01, overnight and out-of-state field trips. Can I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Can you please call the roll? Well, I oh, sorry. Is there a sorry. question? Sorry. It says um, team bonding. I'm just wondering what team. What, I was going to ask that same okay. question. <laughs> Instructional clinic. So just a little bit further clarification for you guys. Cross-country Cross -country team from south, okay. The instructional clinics, do you know anything about that? Music? Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, can you please call the roll. Mrs. Davison? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Ms. Cotter? Yes. <clears throat> okay, moving on to the next item, 11.02, .02, resolution to approve lease agreement with Child Development Center of Franklin County. Mr. Doran? Oh, can I please have a motion and a second? Second. Second. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Doran, go ahead. Good evening, President Cotter, Vice President Davidson, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg and Mrs. Hendricks. In line with the Community Facility Master Planning Committee's recommendations to schedule Central College Elementary School for demolition, we have terminated our original lease agreement with the Child Development Center of Franklin County and their Head Start program. This lease relationship served as a partnership for the program and the district while the status of the building remained in limbo. Now that the building is slated for demolition, we have come to a new lease agreement where the CDCFC will incur the cost for keeping the building open through an increase in rent and a maintenance account held in escrow. In April, our facilities team went through the building's components to determine the estimated cost of keeping the building viable for an additional year. Those expenses are now included in the CDCFC's actual costs. Also included in the rent are the costs for custodial services and utilities. The escrow account will be held, will hold an additional $10,000 for unseen, foreseen maintenance costs. Uh, that will be, the balance of that will be returned to them at the end of the, the lease. It is recommended that the board execute this 11 month lease so that the CDCFC and the Head Start program are able to remain in the facility while planning for the demolition occurs. Any questions? No, no just a remark. Um, <coughs> the experience that we've all had plus the work that I did facilities and operations initially it's just worth pointing out that originally we made the decisions um, not just educationally but from a facility standpoint to uh, populate that building um, because of the oddities of state law relative to uh, vacant property or pardon me vacant buildings but not vacant land um, and uh, and in doing so we made decisions that were relative to both maintenance and custodial to keep that building uh, you know, viable within our fleet. Now that the decisions have been made, 
I'm very, very uh, appreciative of the fact that we have taken that into account from a costing standpoint relative to continuing that building for one more year. I think it's been very, very um, uh, well handled from a responsibility and accountability situation. So my thanks to you, Mr. LaRose, the rest of the facility and operations staff for doing that. And Scott, I am very pleased that we've been able to negotiate this lease. I think it's important that we keep Head Start mm -hmm. uh, partnering with us, a uh, viable entity within the district. They serve an important need for the children and families, but they also serve uh, this district as well as the children come to us uh, with better preparation in their early childhood programming. As we move forward, um, if indeed, uh, as appears, that we do tear down that building, I hope that we're able to work with Head Start to identify another location that makes sense. I know we've mm -hmm. talked about that Me a too. bit, but their role here matters, and they're more than just a tenant. Mm -hmm. They are a true partner mm -hmm. in what we need to do with our children in the district. So as we go forward, we need to keep them in mind, but I'm we'll glad we were able to negotiate to this, and, and thank them. you for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Can you please call the roll? Mr. Villardo? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mr. Bird? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Cotter? Yes. Moving on to uh, agenda item 11.03, resolution to approve facility rental fees. Can I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Dorn? This agenda item has been brought to you, uh, before you to update fees for the facility rental guide as related to policy 7510, the use of district premises. First, this revision increases fees for group three permit holders in our large area venues. Our auditoriums are stressed by heavy use and the facility maintenance costs are therefore stressed as well. The increase in the fees will offset the increased maintenance costs, maintenance costs for items such as floor repairs and lighting expenses as examples. Uh, for our gymnasiums, we have separated the use of the gym floor for a small activity from the use of the entire facility, including bleachers, scoreboards, and electronic equipment. Next, additional fees have been included for parking lots and waste management. We are currently unprotected from someone requesting parking lot space for an event like a car show. Uh, with regard to waste management, large group rentals, such as a multi-day athletic tournament or an auditorium performance recital, have completely filled our dumpsters before our district's use for lunch services on the next Monday. This requires an additional trash pull currently at, at our expense. These costs may now be passed on to the contract holders. And lastly, two personal fees have been modified. We have for your approval the formula used to calculate the hourly rate for technical personnel. That formula is based on a salary schedule and that salary schedule changes annually. So we will update the amount in the facility rental guide once the calculation is approved and the salary schedule has been set. Additionally, the supervision fee has been adjusted. Supervision fees are incurred by contract holders, uh, not the district, and they have been in the same for a number of years. It is recommended that the board approve these fees for the new fiscal year. Any questions? Um, just a quick one, um, and going through preparation for, for tonight's meeting, um, I, I notice, and I've heard some of this feedback before from the community, that we differentiate on a much smaller population of, of end users than some of the other suburban high schools um, relative to nonprofit versus community versus all the different variations. Um, I know that occasionally each year we hear something about um, a non-school entity that is frustrated with, with how we're structured. Um, have we done a comparative to other school districts to see their facility costs rental-wise and how they are breaking those organizations into these designated groups? Uh, well, I attended a business manager's meeting a, a couple weeks ago and there were nine different districts represented and, and we did have discussions about these particular things. I wouldn't say it was an official study. I can tell you that other districts break their groups into many more categories. For example, we, our group two, our Westerville for-profit or not-for-profit, that might be a little bit different in a different community. They might have a not-for-profit group and a for-profit group. Uh, so it, it, it is different in some communities. We certainly could commit to a study of, of that um, comparison. I think that um, what we find, though, is what you would expect. Uh, 
people who are looking for space tend to shop for space and the, the districts that have the lowest facility rentals have the highest use and the least, amount, the, the least amount of control over maintenance of costs and things like that associated with that use. So, um, but, but we certainly could, could have a really nice study this year. You'd like to see that. I'd like to see. I'd like to see where we're at because I think that one of the challenges that we get into is on the first, on, on one part, we have organizations that, that may feel like there are affordability issues relative to their particular group. Mm -hmm. On the other end, I think there are, I'm going to be very frank, I think there are people that use the dilution effect of the, uh, of, of the smaller population of user groups to their advantage for much higher traffic, much higher use at a much lower all net cost. For, for what they're getting from that community asset. So um, I, it may just be worth taking a look at to make sure that it, we're, we're not wanting to cut anybody out of the use of public facilities, but the issue that we keep running into is, is that it seems that some organizations get a lion's share where other organizations may not get an opportunity, and I want to try and make sure we address that as well. Right. So. Any other comments or questions? Can you please call the roll? Mr. Bird. Yes. Ms. Davidson. Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker. Yes. Mr. Villardo. Yes. Ms. Cotter. Yes. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item 11.04, replacement of the walk-in cooler slash freezer at Westville North High School. Um, FY19 bid package three, Mr. Dorn. Oh, can I have a motion and a second to discuss that? So moved. Second. Mr. Dorn. <coughs> this project is per the request of the Food Services Department and shall be funded from the Food Services budget. The cooler to be replaced was installed during the construction of North High School in 1975, making it 43 years old. The life cycle of a walk-in cooler is about 30 years when it's well maintained, uh, 15 years when not, and this one is 43 years old. We solicited bids in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code on May 3rd and May 7th. Three bids were received and publicly read on May 17th. The lowest responsible bid was submitted by Levesque Commercial Construction and Development in the amount of $109,407. It is being recommended that the board accept Levesque's bid for the replacement of the walk-in cooler freezer at North High School. Any questions? Can you please call the roll? Dr. Nestor Baker. Yes. Mr. Villardo. Yes. Mr. Bird. Yes. Mrs. Davidson. Yes. Ms. Cotter. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Okay, moving on to agenda item 12.01. We do not have anyone signed up for public comment this evening. So moving on to 13.01 board comments. Are there any board comments tonight? We haven't met since graduation. Just. Uh, uh, just was a tremendous day and just so um, honored to be a part of that. It's just a lot of fun and um, the kids are excited and it's exciting and uh, just maybe a shout out to them and to their uh, ever present and nurturing parents <laughs> and guiding light of uh, the, the staff. It just really, I just, just uh, congratulations to all of them. Other comments? Um, I'd just uh, like to extend my thanks for the patience of the board as well as the community for being late. Uh, my day started at 5.30 a.m. this morning in Manchester, Tennessee, and I can tell you that the uh, road construction economy is booming in the United States right now um, because uh, I walked in just a few late. So I apologize, but thank you very much for your patience, everyone. Any other comments? No? Okay. Um, no other comments, and we'll move on to agenda item 14.01. The board will meet in regular session on Monday, June 25th at 6 p.m. and Monday, July 9th at 7 a.m. Then, um, and of course, that's here at the Early Learning Center. Um, their next item is seven, um, agenda item 15.01, executive session, for the purpose of preparing, um, conducting, reviewing negotiations and for consideration of appointment, employment dismissal, 
discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of employee, student or official uh, to investigate charges for complaints. Can I have a motion and a second for the executive session? So moved. Second. Can you please call the roll? Mr. Florida. Yes. Ms. Stig. Yes. Mr. Burns. Yes. 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 So we'll move into executive session. Um, we won't have any business after executive session. Um, so just thought I'd let you know. And then we'll adjourn from there. So thank you all for coming tonight. And thank you for your patience.